It's finally done. My cafe racer kit is complete. So today we're going to take a look at it. I'm going to take it outside and crash it for the first time because that's what's going to happen. It is a motorcycle. Um, I'm going to take it out and try to drive it. It's a nice sunny day out so that footage should be good and uh, we'll see how this cafe racer uh, works. So that's what's coming up. Stick around. So here is the Cafe Racer. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about this bike. I really, really like it. Um, it is amazing. Uh, I'm sure some of you have seen my Kyosho video. It's actually quite popular. Uh, I get a lot of views on that. So I'm going to take down the Kyosho bike and you can see a little bit of them being compared. So here is my Kyosho. Um, it is one tenth scale. I believe the Cafe Racer is one eighth. I'm not sure. It's hard to tell with bikes. It does have bigger wheels and a bigger driver. Um, so this is the Kyosho. You can check that video out on my channel. And this one operates by shifting the body weight of the driver and the front wheel just turns compared to wherever the body weight of the driver is. And it can swing literally swing left and right as well as turn left and right so comparing the two we can see they are similar size they are similar size bikes um, the cafe racer is quite a bit heavier but I do have the battery in but it's a bigger motor um, it is a bigger bike um, so there are the two side by side uh, if you're into building I still um, recommend you build the Kyosho. This is not an easy build, um, but there are instructions. So <laughs> that helps. Um, with the X Rider, there are no instructions, unfortunately. So we're going to put this back. I've only driven this once, actually. Well, a couple times, but only one day. I have to take it out and I have to take it for another run. Some people are asking about like damage. Um, not a lot of damage um, to this bike from crashing a few little scrapes. This one, I think my driver could get quite damaged. All right, back to the uh, X-Rider. Now, you will notice I do have some guards on this, so that should protect kickstand down um, from crashing. I made these. This bike doesn't actually come with crash bars. These are aluminum and they're made from a clothes hanger which I have the remnants of here. And what's nice is the diameter of this aluminum clothes hanger is the same as, the diameter is the same as the stays on the bike where you put in a, that's where that piece came from. You can't buy it, but you can buy a clothes hanger and do the same thing yourself. Now, a little bit about the bike. It is um, a gyro bike. Um, we'll turn it on in a minute and you'll there's a gyro in the rear wheel. It's belt driven um, to chain drive. So all the kits are chain drive. The back triangle is CNC aluminum and the main frame is carbon fiber. The driver figure is optional and you buy it separately and it is a plastic model. You got to paint and do the work yourself. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is how this bike works. So as I mentioned, there is a gyro on the back. So we're just gonna turn it on. I have paired it to my Noble, Flysky Noble. Welcome to Noble. So we'll just turn it on. I'm gonna lift it up. So the back wheel spins. There is a gyro inside, also spinning. So I don't know if my mic is picking that up. 
but probably you can hear it there. So the gyro is spinning and that helps the bike stand up. Okay. So we'll let that spin down. Another feature of this bike is it has a front brake. Now the steering on this bike actually turns the wheel. It's not, the driver doesn't move, not like on the Kyo Show. Um, but it has a mechanical front brake that actually engages. Let's see if we can get that. So let me, I need a stronger spring there, I think. Um, let me spin the front wheel. So it is a mechanical brake acting on this disc and that's activated by a servo there that's meshed with the speed control servo. So that's kind of cool. So you have some front wheel braking. You don't have to just rely on the motor. You also have the motor braking. When I first put this all together, I had reverse. I have fortunately turned that off because reverse doesn't work on a motorcycle. Um, so it is a really cool bike. I did all the painting myself. I like to talk about painting. So the driver, you can see his face in there, the helmet done red. This all comes white and the helmet is black. Um, I also did the motor cover. So these are black on most of the pictures you see. I think doing some chrome and silver really pops. Um, all these pieces like this panel here, this is Lexan. I did that silver to match the motor. Lexan, Lexan. You can mount a real headlight in the uh, headlight bucket, but I just used the sticker. Um, all in all, it's a really cool bike and I haven't driven it yet because I wanted to film it. Um, I wanted to film it without any <laughs> damage. I want to talk a little bit about building this. Um, if you want to get an X rider, whether the Saturn racers with the, the kind of the race bike or the cafe racer, I highly recommend buying the RTR. Um, that sounds strange and anybody who knows me who watches my channel, I usually, I prefer kits and I think I've left that on comments on, on CCXRC and a bunch of different sites. I wish more companies make kits. Um, X Rider does sell this as a kit, but it's less of a kit. You can see my unboxing. Um, it is less of a kit than just a box of parts. So when you go to build this, you don't get instructions. You get some blown up images. And I want to talk a little bit about why it's, why that's frustrating. And you know, a big part of the reason why it took me uh, over a year to finish this bike, besides it being very complicated, bikes are far more complicated than RC cars. Um, so I would say they're up there with uh, helicopters, maybe even more so. In the PDF, you get your, you get your whole bike blow up image, uh, list some parts, tells you how to turn left and right. I gotta look at that before we go drive. To turn left, you turn right. Okay. Um, but the rest of the manual is just blown up images. So this is not really an instruction manual. It's just all the parts you have got to kind of guess how things go together and guess what parts you have. So this is actually the um, rear wheel or the front wheel going together. So everybody's front wheel is the same. Here's putting the shocks together. Shows you a blow up of a shock, but you don't actually have to build it. It's already assembled. So down here, part four, part four one, part, part five, you're actually assembling different wheels. So this is a chain drive uh, rear wheel with a gyro, just a weight that spins. And part four is a belt drive rear wheel with a gyro with a part that spins. So it's in here where I started noticing when building um, problems. There's a couple problems. One, it's really hard to figure out what parts are which when you're looking at a bag full of parts. And some things, um, like this part here, 
isn't even labeled. So that makes it hard to build when you don't even have a label. So you have bags of labels on them, but some things are not labeled. Um, so issues like that. And what should you assemble first or second? So this really slows down the build process. Um, and this continues throughout the build. Um, once again, like the rear triangle can be quite different. You can have different wheel builds, so you do different things. So several different images. I'm putting the chassis together. Some of these parts are really hard to figure out what, what parts are what, especially when you get into spacers. All right, so building the, building the chassis and then putting on your shocks putting on your front forks, I mean. So generally building your bike. It's not a build manual, you don't get steps, you do get a bunch of parts, and some of the parts in your kit are different. Some of the parts in the images don't, don't aren't in your kit, some of the parts in your kit aren't in the images, and some of the labeling is incorrect. So you're gonna be looking around at stuff. I don't recommend buying the kit. I think this is going to be an awesome, awesome bike to ride. You can see lots of videos online. They work really, really uh, well. So if you can get your hands on one, you want the Cafe Racer, I would buy a complete one and not build it. Unless you have a year. Um, I could have built it much quicker. It's just that I would get frustrated. So it's one of those it's one of those builds where I would be frustrated with the bike, so I just put it aside. So I got put aside pretty much every part that got done. I'd finish one section, I put it aside. Um, and then maybe months ago by, I wouldn't touch it. So I want to talk more about um, building this bike. Um, so the way the bike is built. So it is carbon fiber. Um, we do have an oil shock in the back. Um, so the back of the bike, we do have an oil shock. The front is uh, friction shocks. Let's slide up and down. Um, brakes are mechanical or motor brakes. What's really cool, what I really liked is that it comes with a, a kickstand. Um, so it's very much like a real um, motorcycle, built completely similar to a real bike. Um, high quality aluminum, no problem with part fitment. The only issue is this driver figure. So you can put any um, rider you want on these. The driver figure doesn't actually fit the bike. And you'll notice down here on these pegs, I've added a extra section. That is because even if you go on their website for X Rider and you look at it, you're gonna see the legs being separated and pulled apart due to the pressure screwing the foot onto those low pegs causes because his legs aren't bent quite correctly. So this driver figure, really, really cool. Um, just be aware, it doesn't really fit the bike. So you might have to do some little mods like that, which aren't a big deal. It's really cool to have a, a driver figure available. So thanks X Rider for that. Um, I do like the attention to the detail. Like when you build it, you build, um, like when you build it, you build your these are metal, by the way, so your gauge cluster, and there's actually inlays in the gauge cluster, so you can see the readout. Um, things like mirrors, I put the reflective mirror on them, but that's really, really nice attention to detail. These are 3D printed parts. Um, the motor cover is actually quite well done, um, quite detailed. I painted mine. Most images, they're black. I do suggest painting them. Um, the bike itself looks really cool. So I think they've done a great job. It's really heavy. It feels very, very solid. Uh, very, very well built. Um, the shock's nice. The suspension's nice. Uh, you don't get any chain uh, lengths changing with the suspension. I'm not sure how it's going to work. Um, we'll find out. Uh, the wheels are grooved, so they're not slick, so they offer a little bit of grip. I have glued my back wheel and I didn't want to until I turned it on. So the motor is quite powerful and it just ballooned it. So that would, wouldn't work very well if I tried to drive it. So I've glued it. The reason I didn't want to glue it is because inside is that gyro system and I'm not 100% confident I built it right. So it took me like a good day's work to put the rear wheel together and I'm not sure I actually built it right. 
it's very noisy. So I might have missed the shim. I might have missed something. And now I have glued my my wheel onto it so it will not come apart. So ah. Um the ESC is shoved in here behind the front wheel. Nice and compact behind the motor. I like that. Um, the receiver is up top. Another thing when you're building it, there's not a lot of room for the receiver. So you might have to set the rider on the seat and the gas tank a bit higher. Mine is a bit higher just to uh, make your receiver fit. Um, this cap is actually aluminum, which is really cool again. Um, nice attention to detail. All in all, it's a beautiful bike. I think it will work. I think I built it correctly and I think I know how to drive it. So all there is to do now is to go outside and see if I do actually know how to drive this ride. I should say ride. How to ride this bike. So let's get going. We're gonna test this out. I forget to mention I'm running 3S because the only batteries I had to fit were 3S helicopter batteries. Um, they're 500 milliamps and I have two charged, so that should work. And then we're gonna try it here in this little driveway. If it turns on. So it is turned on. We put the kickstand up. We have power. Um, let's see what happens. Let's get out. Ah, sorry. Let's try again. We broke the handlebars right off in uh, one crash and his legs came apart. mention if you're building this your standard size allen keys won't fit you're gonna need some 0.89s a 1.27 and a 1.5 these three sizes are really hard to find so these uh micro size eights they're called they're from japan very good you're gonna need those
All right, so we're filming with iPhone because GoPro doesn't work in the sun. You know, GoPro. All right, let's see. A little bit damaged. Well, it's getting warm out. It's about 30 degrees. GoPro doesn't work because GoPro is garbage. G and Go stands for garbage. Um, yeah, don't buy GoPro 11. It's crap. Now, as far as the motorcycle, it would work fairly well. Oh, there's why I'm driving strange. My wheel has been ripped out. So there's that. Okay, so a little bit of damage. Maybe you have, uh, I might have bent that whole thing. Um, my driver is long gone, as you've seen. My crash bars are rather weak. Um, they've been deformed quite a bit. Rear wheel's getting worn. Ah, uh, the verdict. Really cool motorcycle. But you need to live in a country with parking lots that don't have cars in them. Uh, China neither has parking lots nor places without cars. Um, so it's really hard to find a place to drive this. I guess I could go find a track and put it on the track so I have some room. Um, I actually found the Kyosha easier to drive in that uh, I didn't need as much space to actually get it going. This bike's quite a bit heavier. I find it falls a bit more. I think maybe my crash bars are a bit wide, maybe. Um, it has a lot of power on 3S. I think the driver figure, although it looks really cool, is impractical as the first time I drove it and crashed it, I totally destroyed it. Um, yeah, I, I can't see those figures lasting long for anyone, even someone that's a better driver than me. Um, cool bike. Uh, now these cost probably like to build the kit and then buy all the electronics. I bought the upgraded servos and I put the br ow, brushless motor and you're gonna buy the ESC and you need a radio. Probably looking at like maybe $800 um, all in. It's a lot of money. Um, before you buy one, be sure you have a track. Don't expect these things to hold up. They look very cool, but anything 3D printed is kind of garbage on RC cars or bikes or whatever. And like these metal things just bent right away. Uh, I'm going to find a different handlebar solution and I'll find a, a rider 
Um, I'll put a rider on that's just a action figure rather than something that's like a hard, hard model. All right, so that's the X Rider. It looked a lot better at the beginning of the video than it does now at the end. Um, before I go, I just want to say uh, GoPro sucks. Really, really sucks. And uh, thanks for tuning in. I hope you liked it. Okay, honey. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. I will have this bike back on because I do quite like it, even if I can't drive it. Um, I'll have this bike back on and uh, we'll try to be in a space with more space, which is almost impossible to do. But I do have that airplane. I just had my last video. Um, so we need to get out of the city. I do have a couple boats and I would like a new boat. Um, so we do need to get out of downtown and maybe we can take boats and planes and helicopters and motorcycles and my uh, armor and fraction because that needs space too. I don't have any space here for it. Um, take a whole carload of stuff and go out to uh, the countryside and film. All right, guys, catch you next time. Thanks for watching.